So yes, what was the last thing we did? Can can anyone check and let me know? Check your notes if you're not able to remember. We were doing types of chemical types equilibrium. Types of chemical equilibrium. The homogeneous and heterogeneous. Thing. Okay, and what's the point of difference? Uh, how do you figure out if it's homogeneous or heterogeneous equilibrium? So in homogeneous, the state or like the phase should be the same. Absolutely, the phase of the phase of the product yeah, and yeah, the yeah, yeah. reactants. Reactants and products both, correct. Okay. Um. Now we will get into proper like mathematical expression for equilibrium. We're gonna figure out what is an equilibrium constant and its properties. You know what will happen if you increase the temperature, decrease the temperature, pressure, concentration, all of that stuff. Okay. Um. To figure out what is equilibrium constant, it all starts with law of mass action. Any of you remember what is the law of mass action? Total mass remains conserved because matter can't be created or destroyed. Oh, that's just the conservation of mass. This is, we're talking about mass action. So the mass is getting into some action. This is related specifically to chemical reactions. Anyone? No? Okay, so this was proposed by the formula for it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, there's uh, like lowercase a and uppercase a plus like lowercase b, uppercase b gives a product where rate of reaction is, I think, directly proportional to the uh, molarity raised to the number of moles. Yeah, that's it. So the rate of a reaction. So in more um, formal terms, this is term like this is rephrased as the rate at which a substance reacts. A substance reacts means rate at which that reaction happens is directly proportional to its active mass. So the key words here is the active mass part of it. Uh, what do you guys understand by the word active mass? What do you mean by active mass? The amount of a substance which is like which reacts. Correct. So the amount of substance that is actually taking part in the reaction. Okay. So when we talk about active mass, think of it this way. Like suppose you have a pure solid reacting. Let's say carbon burning, for example. Um, in that case, active mass is going to be equal to um, the mass of the whole substance because there's no impurities, there's nothing other than that. Um, even in the case of uh, liquids, if it's a pure liquid, then it's going to give me a mass of the substance only. But if it is in solution, then it's basically the concentration of the reactant. So for example, if I take 10 liters of uh, 1 m HCl solution, then my mass is not whatever is the mass of 10 liters. My mass is the concentration. Uh, how much of HCl am I actually, is actually taking part in the reaction? For HCl, it's like this. But when we look at weak acids, weak bases, we'll also have to take into consideration how much of it is dissociating, so the degree of dissociation. Yeah. So that is the reason we call it active mass. It's the actual mass of the reactant that is reacting. So rate of reaction is directly proportional to the active mass. So mathematically, yeah, Ritu, this is what you are getting. Could you explain? So 10 uh, liters of 1 ml HCl. So what will be the concentration of HCl? 1 ml. I mean 1 m, 1 molarity. Yes, molarity gives you the concentration. So 1 m is basically 1 mole per liter. So 8 liter may 1 mole of HCl is there. So if I'm taking 10 liters of that substance, basically my actual active mass is 10 moles ka jobi mass hai. That is my actual, the active mass of the substance. Okay. Um, Ritu, yeah, good question. Uh, thanks for reminding. In case it's a gas, um, can you guys like guess what it could be? 
active mass for a gas in what terms are we going to take it does it follow like the law that we had learned in the first chapter where it's like number of moles in one mole is 22 liters um for gases yes absolutely it's the number of moles of gas that is present there uh, but the kind of measurement that we always take when it comes to gases is the partial pressure okay so one atmosphere is the default pressure but usme se like this is atmospheric pressure right and atmosphere has all of the gases so if you are looking at specifically only one a particular gas that is reacting then we consider the partial pressure of that particular gas so all our measurements like because its volume can tend to change but pressure usually remains at one atmosphere so and because number of moles is related to the number of like the pressure exerted by the gas we find it easier to take the partial pressure measurements also like when we are looking at closed reactor vessels and all it's easier to control the pressure that it's at you know you can control the number of molecules by controlling the pressure that it's at it's easier to measure the pressure that a gas is at to figure out how much of it is there so ma'am could you part of uh, part about degree of dissociation what is that one oh so this is for weak acids and bases like weak salts basically so basically when you have something like hcl when you drop it in water hcl is an acid right so the amount of h plus that it gives out is the main part of the reaction h plus is the one that's taking part in the reaction be it neutralization or acid base or whatever it may be uh how much of h plus and how much of cl minus am i getting that's what it depends on so something like hcl nacl magnesium chloride all of these salts they dissociate pretty much completely so we can take their concentration directly but when we have something weak like for example acetic acid this is an organic acid and you guys have learned that this is a weak acid the reason why this is a weak acid is all of the acetic acid molecules don't dissociate into h plus and ch3coo minus ions a very large chunk of them remain intact as this molecule so if i have 10 molecules of hcl so all 10 of them are going to dissociate into h plus and cl minus but if i have 10 molecules of acetic acid so out of these 10 maybe four of them will dissociate into h plus and ch3co minus and six of them are going to remain the same so the degree of dissociation is not 100% it's only like 40% only 40% of the total mass is splitting into this okay yeah, so that's what refers to degree of dissociation uh when you guys do ionic equilibrium right this is what we'll be talking about in the case of weak acids weak bases what is the degree of dissociation which is like a strong acid we we want what will be the like active mass its concentration whatever is the concentration if i'm taking 1 m then of whatever amount 500 ml then whatever is the concentration that if i'm taking <coughs> uh a uh, 3 molar concentration of uh, i don't know like 250 ml of hcl then my calculations i don't have to modify it i can find the number of moles and whatever mass i get from that concentration that will be my active mass so like if we if you want to talk about uh, the degree of dissociation of a strong uh, acid uh, to find out the active mass then it would be the the concentration only you won't yeah. go by so, yeah degree of dissociation is applicable only for weak acids weak bases uh weak salts like things that don't ionize that easily okay yeah. so for strong acid strong bases uh strong like proper ionic salts we don't really care about this it's completely fine only for the weak things we look at degree of dissociation Okay. 
So for the mathematical expression, um, so let's have a, a hypothetical equation where A and B react to give C and D. The small alphabet, small letters represents the stoichiometric coefficients and the capital ones represent the reactant and product itself. Okay. So this means that A moles of reactant A reacts with B moles of reactant B to give C moles of C and D moles of D. So according to the law of mass action, the rate of a reaction, so if we consider forward reaction in this direction, RF will be equal to, um, so, okay, not equal to, it's directly proportional to the, cons the active mass, matlab, for default sake, we let's consider the concentration itself. Concentration of A, and because B is also there, B multiplied. Um, here, there's something that you guys need to take care of. Concentration is represented in square brackets. Do not put curly brackets, do not put circular brackets, and do not use square brackets in other places because in chemistry, especially physical chemistry, when you're studying reactions, square brackets mean a particular thing, which is concentration of whatever is inside it. So this what is equation that represents, this representation matters. R is rate of reaction. I've put F because rate of forward reaction. Directly proportional to the active mass that is concentration of A into the concentration of B. So, or if we remove the constant of proportionality, let's say RF is equal to some constant into, uh, or let's constant always with K. So KF into concentration of A, concentration of B. Similarly, if, we, if I look at the backward reaction, which is this direction, then the reactants become C and D. So rate of backward reaction equal to KB into concentration of C into concentration of D. So what is special about equilibrium? What do we know about equilibrium by definition? Rate of forward reaction is equal to backward reaction. Rate of forward equal to rate of backward. So that's exactly what we do. Substitute the values. So KF into A into concentration of B equal to KB into concentration of C into concentration of D. Uh, let's get all the similar things on one side. So the constants will be on one side. Let's say KF upon KB equal to concentration of C upon concentration of D concentration of A into concentration of B. Yeah. Uh, one important thing that I missed out here, stoichiometric coefficients, Anna, this also matters. And how the relation is established is, like how many ever reactants you have, all of them will be multiplied. So if the stoichiometric coefficient of A is A, so this will be raised a times, this will be raised B times. And similarly for C, this will be raised to the power C, this will be raised to the power D. Just modify it all throughout. So the R stands for the reaction, right? Rate of a reaction. I've written it here. Ma'am, could you, uh, so if there's like O2, mm -hmm. that's it's not coefficient, right? So would we put that to, us, to the power two or no stoichiometric coefficient um so once you once we finish this thing i'll give you guys an example with with, with like an example reaction so we'll go over that let me know when you guys this... have until here so then i'll write the next step 
this we're doing chemical or ionic chemical this applies to any reversible reaction took a generalized reaction here start now okay Adit is done. Who else? Me. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Kaveri and Rishit. Done. Okay. Um, now look at KF and KB. Like KF is a constant of proportionality. KB is also a constant of proportionality. So if I divide them both. I'm going to get another constant. So KF is I... a constant for the forward reaction. KB is always a constant for the backward reaction. So at a particular temperature, KF and KB are going to be constants. Uh, so the rate will adjust based on however you change this. So these concentrations can be variable. Rate will be adjusted. Like if you increase the concentration, rate will increase. But KF, KB are always constants. So when I divide both the constants, I'm essentially going to get another constant. So I'll write this as um, KC is equal to concentration of A. Sorry, products always first. C concentration of D raised to the power D upon concentration of A raised to the power A concentration of B raised to the power B. Okay. So this particular constant Kc is called the equilibrium constant because you get this value specifically when these two rates are equal on dividing these two at equilibrium. So this is called equilibrium constant. And the relation between equilibrium constant with the parameters of the reaction, which is concentration of reactants and products, is this. Is this like derivation we asked? Maybe this particular derivation, not like the others, but yeah. Yeah. Now, this is quite convenient because equilibrium constant for any particular reaction at a particular temperature, this is always going to be constant, like its name is a constant for a reason. So based on the equilibrium constant, you can figure out um, how a reaction is going to proceed. Like if the equilibrium constant is a really high value, something like 3.98 into 10 power 3, then that means that the numerator is high, denominator is low. So you know that you can figure, you can guess that the reaction is favor, favored more towards the product side. And if the equilibrium constant is a really low value, something like uh, 2.7 into 10 power minus 6, Low value means 
फ्रैक्शन है ना लाइक यू डिवाइडिंग दीज टू मतलब दिस इज लो एंड दिस इज हाई विच मीन्स कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ रियक्टेंस बहुत हाई है लाइक एट दैट टाइम ओनली आई एम रीचिंग इक्वलिब्रियम एंड दिस इज माई कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू मतलब then you can figure out that acha the reaction is leaning more towards the reactants i'm not going to get a lot of products by the time uh, this reaches equilibrium so i need to do something about it okay yeah, so that's how like very roughly you can interpret this um can you explain this part again ha huh. okay uh let's take an example actually simple reactions very hypothetical values i'm taking uh before that sanat yeah what's up what's your question uh can kc be equal to 1 yeah that means concentration like both of them happen to be equal then kc will be 1 there's so many chemicals so many compounds so many reactions so there is a possibility um okay so different stoichiometric coefficients and all that i'll take neutralization reaction okay um hcl plus naoh or let's let's shake it up a bit naoh plus h2so4 let's say this is an equilibrium with what products na2so4 plus h2o balance this equation so 2 naoh hoga and 2 h2o okay first step can you give me the expression for kc for this particular reaction equilibrium constant this is going forward or backward whatever reaction i have put here this is the equilibrium that's established the concentration of na2so4 into the concentration of h2o raised to 2 divided by the concentration of naoh raised to 2 into the concentration of h2so4 absolutely correct so the concentration of products so in this case we have na2so4 and h2o this will be as it is kyunki stoichiometric coefficient is 1 concentration of h2o this will be raised to 2 squared 2 here yeah it will be squared divided by concentration of naoh this will be squared because of the 2 over here and concentration of h2so4 okay so this is my expression here now let's take let's take hypothetical values for kc like let's say if kc is really high value something like 3.7 into 10 raised to the power 6 for a temperature numerically if you were to get a really large number by dividing like two quantities what can you say about these two quantities numerator will be bigger than the denominator like the numerator will be the bigger number by the denominator will be a smaller number right so if numerator is high and denominator is a low value smaller number then overall when i divide these two i'm going to get a large number result yes ma'am right making sense ritu yes ma'am but i still didn't get like what this means for the rate of reaction okay we'll come to that so now because kc is high we've established that numerator is high denominator is low abhi numerator mein kya hai what values do we have in the numerator so what does this represent what does this represent salt and water salt and water yes but 
what of salt and water like salt and water are substances they are not numerical values right what does this represent concentration concentration so basically the concentration of the products so product ka concentration is higher than the reactant ka concentration that's what it means denominator mein reactant ka concentration hai so basically by the time equilibrium got established we got a really large good amount of products much higher than the reactant ka concentration at that point of time so a high value of kc represents that like you can conclude qualitatively that okay reaction is going in the forward direction i am going to get a good yield before this settles into equilibrium okay now the other side of things if the value of kc is low something like okay let's say 3.7 but 10 power minus 6 iska matlab kya hai when will i end up so low ha huh. numerator ka value is low and denominator ka value is high iska matlab the red case i have a high concentration of the reactant reactant ka concentration concentration matlab kya the quantity of reactant is much greater than the quantity of the product so i am not getting enough product if this is my aim matlab equilibrium like the reaction proceeded for some time and as soon as i got like a couple of product ka molecules equilibrium settled in matlab the reaction is favoring the backward reaction more like if i started off with this i'll get a good amount of this but if i started off with this i'm not going to get a good quantity of this so that's what a low value of kc represents okay so again this is all comparative and it's just qualitative you know like just by looking at it some conclusions that we can draw this is like one way like this is one of the uses of equilibrium constant you can figure this stuff out here Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, just, just a moment, please. okay like you guys clear about this so far yes yes ma'am okay yeah. so kc is the equilibrium constant uh, we just represent kc because we usually end up taking concentration of the reactants and products uh, when it's a homogeneous system with all of them being gases like when we end up taking partial pressures of each of these quantities then you end up uh noting it as kp so equilibrium constant with when pressures are taken but generally like 80% like majority of times you end up using kc there's a lot of the reactions you do it with uh, in in solution form uh ma'am the concentration of these products and reactants will be given to us yeah that's like okay in a real world situation that's something that's under your control you are the one taking react the concentration of reactants so that's another use rishit that you bring out an excellent point like if you're looking at a real world condition so kc is something that's like experimentally determined and each reaction at a particular temperature well that constant is always there like that's something that people find out and you know record it so if you know equilibrium constant and you take certain amount of concentration of the reactants then you can predict okay 
how much is the concentration of products I'm going to get by the time equilibrium sets in. So that's one use application. Uh, examination point of view, you may be given any of these quantities. You may be given concentration of reactants and products asked to find out Kc, or you may be given Kc and then concentration of products, then predict the concentration of any one of the reactant. Like you'll be given some values. There are going to be one or two unknown values that you have to find out. Could be anything. Okay. Um, I'll discuss like characteristics of KC. Uh, there are a few more applications based on it. Then we'll do some problems on the equilibrium constant. Okay. So characteristic. Characteristics of equilibrium constant. The first one is something that I had mentioned. It is a definite value for every reaction at a certain temperature. It's constant for a certain temperature. Doesn't change with concentration, doesn't change with anything else. It only depends on temperature. And every reaction will have its own Kc. or like write this not for a reaction, for every reaction. Like it's, it's a characteristic of a reaction. Ki, achha, is reaction mein, these are the reactants, these are the products, and this is the Kc value that way. And this is the amount of energy released. That way for a particular reaction at certain temperature, that's a constant value. Uh, next, okay, next few points are very, uh, how does Kc change with differing conditions? So if, if the reaction is divided by a certain value n, then the Kc is modified as, then K dash will be equal to K by, uh, K raised to the power one by n. What this means is, so basically let's say I have HI dissociating into H2 plus I2. This is the original reaction balanced equation. Let's say iska equilibrium constant is K. If I modify this, if I divide it by two, so that I get HI in equilibrium with half H2, plus half I2. Then, is ka ek equilibrium constant rega? Now, this one's equilibrium constant, let's say if this is K dash, then K dash, numerically, you will find that it's equal to K raised to the power one by two. Um, can you explain again? This is a relation. Like, okay, you want me to derive it? You can do that. Um, for this example, can you write the expression for K? What is K equal to? Rishad, what is K equal to for this, this reaction? Uh, well, mm, Kc or just K? Whichever, doesn't matter, same thing. But I'm talking about the equilibrium constant. What is the expression for equilibrium constant? And for this, it would be H2. Concentration of H2, yeah. Yeah, concentration of H2 into I2. Okay. By concentration of h1 square h i square sorry huh. okay. now what is k dash equal to so k dash is the equilibrium constant for this modified equation okay. 
then it would be h2 half then i2 half by h2 half like what uh, sorry like here to the power into uh into, into i2 half into half no, like to the power 1 by 2 ha huh, so say it properly no i concentration of i2 raised to the power 1 by 2 okay divided by hi concentration of hi this is important rishat concentration of and you absolutely need to draw the square brackets otherwise it won't make any sense okay so don't like take this lightly um now see this is also concentration of h2 concentration of i2 concentration of hi h2 i2 hi what is the relation between k and k dash like what should you do to k so that you get k dash so what what am i squaring am i squaring this or am i squaring this square k dash so that you square k dash correct so square k dash matlab i can do it the other way around and yes put a square root on uh, k right so that's exactly what the this particular second point is stating so if i divide the re, uh, reaction by n so in this case i have divided this whole thing by 2 so 2 divided by 2 1 ho gaya 1 divided by 2 half 1 divided by 2 half if i divide the reaction by a certain number then the equilibrium constant is also modified in this particular way. So if I'm dividing the original by 2, then the equilibrium constant is raised to the power 1 by that particular number. So that's what we see here. So original tha k, the modified one has become k raised to the power 1 by 2. Um, yeah. Like what is the need for all this? Isn't it the same thing? Why would we want to divide it by that? It depends on the context, right? Like if you look back in thermodynamics, abhi, uh, heat of a reaction ka kuch definition tha. Like you can apply it to any reaction. But when it comes to specifically heat of combustion, let's say, then you have to burn like one mole of the substance. You can't go by, you know, balancing it anyhow. So that way when you're like, modifying certain reactions to fit uh, the context of whatever you need to study, then accordingly, these values also will get modified. So if I'm studying this particular reaction where I'm studying dissociation of one mole of HI only, then I can't take this particular numerical value. I need to modify this value to fit this equation. Yeah, that's why we're learning like these relations here. Also makes it easier, like you don't have to do this whole thing, whole derivation again and again. Directly, if I just know the rule, I'll just take this number and do this math, mathematical operation. Multiply, divide, whatever it may be. Yeah. Just formulate certain shortcuts when they need to be applied, when they need to be used. Um, similarly, iska hi counterpart hai. Here we divided it by a number n. Suppose I do the same thing if the reaction is multiplied by n. Then what do you think will happen to the equilibrium constant? The modified will be equal to? k into n, k raised to the power n, uh, k divided by n, k raised to the power n only. What? Yeah. K raised to the power n. Raised to the power n. Raised to the power n, yes. 
सेम थिंग यहाँ पे डिवाइड हो कर रहे हैं तो हियर ऑल्सो इज गेटिंग डिवाइडेड वी मल्टीप्लाइंग इट तो हियर ऑल्सो इट वी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द सेम नंबर ठीक है नेक्स्ट केस ओके सो इफ द इक्वेशन इज रिवर्स्ड प्लस फोर्थ नो so if the equation is reversed then what will happen then k dash will be equal to let me write the example so let's say mm -hmm. a plus b gives c plus d is ka equilibrium constant is k now what i did is c plus d so i'm starting off with c plus d to get a plus b if i say this is k dash how are k and k dash related 1 by k k is equal to 1 by k dash ha huh. k dash is equal to 1 by k so if i take the reverse equation i need to take the reciprocal of it this also you guys can do like write the expression for k write the expression for k dash you, it it will be fairly obvious once you do that um next the this is uh, this makes sense when you're looking at multi step reactions um if two equations are uh, added ma'am i didn't understand reversed means here yahan pe example diya na i just reversed it so the products have become the reactants considering the other way around ah uh, okay hmm. So, if two reactions are added, then added मतलब let's say I have a plus b in equilibrium with c plus d, and then p plus q in equilibrium with r plus s. So, when I add both of them, so इसका एक Let's say K one है, इसका एक K two है, then overall K how are how do you think they'll be related to K one and K two? Ma'am, can you repeat? So two equations है, I'm adding them. So Each equation individually has its own equilibrium constant. Let's say that's k one and k two, and after adding overall equation ka, I have a different equilibrium constant which is k. Now, how are these three related to each other? Write the expressions if if it's confusing, if you're not able to figure it out, write the expression. So K two will be equal to R S divided by P Q. Oh, nice, Rishit, you got it. So this will be A plus B plus P plus Q in equilibrium with C plus D plus R plus S. So if you write the equilibrium constant for this, see what happens. so how can you express k in terms of k1 and k2 k1 plus k2 k1 into k2 yes k1 in so rishit like did you derive it so again no just a guess <laughs> that's why i asked you to like write it here then their k's are uh multiply so this is basically this part is equal to k1 into this part is equal to k2 so then their k's are multiplied and similarly iska counterpart if if two equations are subtracted 
then overall then it will be divided divided yes okay then two more we have ha huh. can you seven. go back yeah yeah Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me just get a confirmation from everyone. No, no. Ritu was done, Adha was done. Okay. Pushit was also done, right? Okay. Kaveri, go uh, ahead. No, ma'am, just a minute. Okay. Hmm. So, seven effect of catalyst. If I add a catalyst to the reaction, uh, what do you think will happen to the rate, the equilibrium constant? Might go towards the positive side or something like that. Mm, you might think that, no? But the thing is, with a catalyst... Higher value? No, that's what. Like, that's what Rishit said. Nothing like, changes. It's just that yeah. the time for the reaction becomes less. The reaction will occur more quickly than I guess. Because yeah. it's just the speed. Correct. So, catalyst only helps with the speed of the reaction. And it helps, like... How much ever it helps the forward reaction, it helps the backward reaction also equally. So it's not, it, there is no effect on the concentration of the reactants and products or the equilibrium as such. Uh, the only difference is that the equilibrium is attained faster. So ma'am, the uh, only thing that affects the KC would be temperature. Yes, only the temperature. So just speed zyada ho gaya, but the value, numerical value of KC doesn't change. Equilibrium constant will remain the same. Okay. Um, so this is because if you want to write down the reaction, so catalyst basically affects forward reaction and backward reaction both. So equilibrium may koi change nahi hoga. So now coming to the big part, effective temperature.
so this has like some new information here so just let me know when you guys are done noting so i can start this ma'am i know you would you will come to that eventually but still could you just say again what was kp kp is uh, same thing as kc except if you are considering partial pressures like if all the reactants and products are in gaseous form then instead of taking molarity molality like in terms of molarity you are going to take the quantity uh, in terms of partial pressure so in that case you are going to get kp like it, it's just expressed denoted as kp to tell you that oh so this particular equilibrium constant we got the number by considering the pressures not the number of molecule number of moles okay Should we start off with the effect of temperature? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You can cut. Cool. okay um so iske liye there's like two equations that uh, you haven't come across derivations are not like there at this level so we need to get back to the gibbs energy part of it so one the equation was just given to you uska derivation context nothing else was mentioned but it is the relation of gibbs energy so delta g is equal to Minus two point three zero three R T log K. So the K in this equation is equilibrium constant. So this is the relation between Gibbs energy and equilibrium constant at a particular temperature. Okay, this we are going to use along with another relation that gives us the relation between delta G and temperature. so if we compare gibbs energy at two different temperatures so we have delta g not upon wait so delta g not at t2 upon that temperature t2 minus delta g not at t1 divided by that temperature t1 is found to be equal to the overall enthalpy of that reaction delta h not into 1 by t2 minus 1 by t1 so substituting yahan pe delta g ka value in this particular equation for two different temperatures we get um log K two. If we consider equilibrium constant at T two as K two log K two minus log K one is equal to again two point three zero three R T. Who sub like T is anyway counted over here. This will be equal to minus two point three zero three. Oh, no, denominator will be there. One by two point three zero three R. Times one by T two minus one by T one into delta H. Okay, yeah. so this delta H not. So this is essentially the relation between the uh, equilibrium constants at two different temperatures T two and T one. So using the law of logarithms, mathematical changes, you can write this as K log of K two by K one. Is equal to delta H not divided by two point three zero three R into one by T two minus one by T one. Ma'am, hmm? what is R? Could you explain this point again? 
r is a universal gas constant if you find r in a formula like this which is not like reactant product if it's not like simple like, like that if it's in an equation with temperature and everything it's that pv equal to nrt wala r only the universal gas constant and where will we use this uh ritu no this is for any equation we're talking in generalized terms now any equation it's got as gibbs free energy for a particular temperature us temperature pe k is the reaction constant uh, equilibrium constant this is the equation similarly if we, if i'm comparing um the gibbs free energy at two different temperatures this is the equation this is a relation between the the delta g at t2 and delta g at t1 so delta g delta g is common like this i will modify it as delta g upon t is equal to minus 2.303 r into log k so isko leke maine isme substitute kiya so i missed one step here so basically this will modi be modified as minus 2.303 r log k2 minus at temperature t1 will be same thing log k1 equal to whatever is there on the rhs to maine minus 2.303 r dono mein se common leke i've shifted it over here and then uske baad it's just mathematical rearranging i didn't understand the first point these are just the relations like this is the relation of gibbs energy with equilibrium constant and temperature like we don't have the derivation of this it'll get a little complicated it's not there in your syllabus so just like take it as face value so this is the relation of gibbs free energy with temperature with equilibrium constant could you also go over the second point and okay. what happened to delta s uh so this is at a given temperature like at a given pressure if we are comparing delta g at two different temperatures like just looking at it face value i feel like they've taken the entropy change as the common this thing and derived this equation but this is purely relation of delta g at particular temperature if you are comparing at t1 and t2 so think of it as okay not exactly effect of temperature relation with temperature modify it that way so if we have like okay i know that the equilibrium constant for a reaction at uh, 300 kelvin is some k1 utna pata hai now what if i increase the temperature to 400 kelvin then what will happen to the equilibrium constant then i can use this equation to find out what will happen to the equilibrium constant that is the entire point of this oh i did a mathematical error so yahan pe minus nahi hai so this will become 1 minus 2 or you can maintain it as 2 minus 1 add a minus here but yeah don't forget this minus sign okay so this is relation with temperature um if i'm given equilibrium like if i know equilibrium constant let's say at room temperature 300 kelvin is 1 then what will happen if i do it at freezing temperature use this relation to find out what will happen if i increase the temperature to 500 kelvin use this equation so this will basically the relation between equilibrium constant with temperature if this is all not making sense know where it is coming from ignore it like just remember this part alone this is the main thing this is just derivation of okay how did we get this relation it ties in back with gibbs energy So this will be used in numerical. 
yeah so for numerical just worry about this what is 2.303 hmm what is 2.303 that's a number again we're dealing with logarithms right remember like usually in derivations integration and all you end up with natural log like ln so yeah, that's to convert natural log to common log right yes so that's where we got this 2.303 from we did this yesterday in the maths class like uh, jaiser taught taught us the basics of yes. log and all Ooh. because it's used in chemistry and in physics and everywhere now mm, nice and like none of our school teachers uh, taught us log particularly mm okay you didn't have a section on like even matlab when you guys have logarithms when you do everything differentiation integration normal functions like graphing it's all deleted oh oh okay all right yeah so even in our exams we'll be given the value of log for the final calculation yeah we won't have to like derive it or whatever mm yeah you are have to derive could we yeah huh could we try like a sum on this i feel like i get it better cuz i know the formula but if you gave me a sum i would not know how to use it yeah absolutely i'm just checking how much is left this is like a logical checkpoint i will do a couple of numericals uh gaussian system ke ke liye you do you take partial pressures i'll i'll do that if we come across a question based on that okay ठीक है लुक एट एग्जांपल 2 दिस इज वन टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट यू विल गेट ऑन केसी दिस इज अ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन समथिंग दैट आई टोल्ड यू गाइस पीसीएल5 सीएल3 पीसीएल2 आर एट इक्विलिब्रियम एट 500 केल्विन इन अ क्लोज्ड कंटेनर एंड देयर कंसंट्रेशंस सी गिवन कंसंट्रेशन डायरेक्टली सो दिस मच दिस मच एंड दिस मच रेस्पेक्टिवली कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ केसी फॉर द रिएक्शन सो दिस इज फेयरली डायरेक्ट यू गिवन द इक्वेशन write the value like expression for kc you're given the concentrations directly so substitute it and find out uh for this you can use a calculator because i just want to see that you guys can apply the formula correctly so jaldi fatafat finish it up like but the formula like one we just did log k2 by k1 no this will not be used here right there mm -hmm. are separate questions for that yeah read the question like don't go by section wise see what is needed what is given and then decide what formula to use uh what are the units for kc uh, moles so that will depend on the expression for like what okay, are the right. here so figure it out yeah i said what
Oh, Adit and Smera have sent in. Sanat also has sent. Sanat, check your exponent. Ritu, check your exponents. Numerically, all of you got the same thing. Uh, Rishit got it. Ritu and Rishit, what are the units for KC? I know. There wouldn't be any units, right? It's there wouldn't be no. Moles, eta. See, I use that. See, concentration here, numerator may, concentration here, denominator may. Uh, do the math and then figure out the units. Will jayega. So in this particular case, what do we have? Um, KC will be equal to concentration of PCL3, concentration of Cl2 upon concentration of PCL5. Na? So units dal ke dekho. So this is mole per liter. This will also be mole per liter. And this will be mole per liter. Ek ye, ek ye cancel ho jayega. So this would be the units. Arnav, got it? So if there was another reactant, like there would not be any units. Yeah, then all of it will get cancelled and it'll just be a number. Absolutely. So units are very, very subjective to the reaction itself. Itne quantities are uh, who else? So Ritu has sent um Adit sent Kaveri also. Kaveri, check your decimal and Send again. Also mention what are the units. Oh, ma'am, can you give a question with the a numerical constant also, with the, like the coefficient, like the cow? Yeah, uh, symmetric coefficient, na? like raising to the power. Huh. Let me see. Oh. Okay, Ritu has corrected it. So, Kaveri, uh, units and uh, check exponents. Galat aya wo. Very good. The next question is itself is directly with coefficients and you can do that. Correct, got it. Thik hai. Uh, example three. The following concentrations were obtained for the formation of ammonia from N2 and H2 at equilibrium at this temperature. So this much was concentration of nitrogen, this much hydrogen, this much this thing. Same funda, just that you need to figure out the reaction, the balanced equation, and then apply the values and figure out AC. Ma'am, when we are putting the values of the concentration, we don't have to keep the square brackets, right? No. Yeah. If you're putting the numbers, square brackets are not necessary. Square brackets denote that it is concentration of what is inside. So like chemical, like formula with a square bracket on its sides means concentration of that thing.
Okay. Are you guys like calculating abhi? Oh, Smira has already finished. Let me also do the math. Oh, very, very different values between Smira and Ritu. So very big difference. Okay. So we're looking for formation of ammonia. So the equation you guys have to write it correctly. I miss my answer, correct?
Ma'am, you're on mute if you want to say something. Hi, yeah, okay, where are we at? Oh, example three. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think all of you got very, okay. There's like six of you and I have four different answers. Um, I'll just like scroll here. First thing, what did you, like, did you guys write down the correct equation? So we're talking about formation of ammonia. So it'll be N2 plus H2 gives NH3. And second thing, did you guys remember to balance the equation? So that'll give you the correct. Yes, no, I did not. I okay. did ma'am. Spotted. Okay. I forgot to cue, but <laughs> there you go. Okay. So once you have this, it's after that, like kikya. So after that, it's just the calculation. So 3.5 into 10 square is what you have to get. Well, I got the same. It's like one exponent. So it's the same thing. I got the number. I got the same. Arnav got it. Sanat, exponents may you. Okay. So the math here you need to figure out. Uh, Kaveri, you got 2.6. Yeah, I didn't balance it once. Uh, Adit, you got it. Like you just represent it. Probably. Uh, Trishit, you didn't take the division completely. Kya? Matlab, ek decimal ke baad you stopped it. Otherwise, close enough. The two and yeah, after two decimals, I just stopped. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you write it in scientific method, no? So, Trishit, you wrote the answer as what? Uh, this is what you wrote it as 0. 0, 0.03 into 10 power 4. Now, every time you want to leave it like this, like scientific method may express karna hai. Scientific method always follows something like A point B. So there should compulsory be one digit before the decimal, one digit after the decimal. Like preferably two digit after the decimal is the perfect way to show it. But if at all you want to do, Take it up to this level, like three ke baad, get one more digit, then express it as three point whatever you get into 10 power, whatever it may be. Okay, so that's like the most perfect way of like expressing your answer. But for example, if I added five, my answer is technically correct, right? It is correct. Numerically, definitely, obviously, it is correct. Because when I do the math, I will get 3.5 into 10 square. But I'm just saying, like, presentation point of view may one digit before the decimal, one di two digits after the decimal, like the way it's given here, that's the most accurate way of representing. Like, this is scientific notation, right? So even when you take something like Planck's constant, Avogadro's number, all of them follow this format because this is like the required proper scientific way to represent it. Minimum one. So would we need to add like mole? Yeah, put the units. Presentation ke liye always units are good. Cool. Whoever got the answer, hai. whoever did not get 3.5 into 10 power 2, do you guys figure out where you went wrong? Yes, ma'am. All right. Another example. Probably made an error with the calculation, like with the Expert. adding and subtracting of the powers. Mm. Okay. This is the next numerical example with temperature. No, this is not temperature. Read the question, figure it out. 
uh, at 500 Kelvin, equilibrium constant for this reaction is 5. Here, what would be the equilibrium constant for this reaction? So you can see that this has been modified. Oh, it has been reversed and also like multiplied by some number. So 5 ka, you need to modify it to match this. Solve, solve this. Yeah, sorry. Perhaps, kya Rishit, like it's a mathematical thing. So if you're sure of your calculation, do it. Don't, no guesswork. You've written down the things. Mm, definitely it won't be 25. Observe what is happening to the equations. Sanhat got it, yes. Smera got it, yes. Adit got it. Rishit, I'd say you're 50% correct. You just observe what is happening to the equation and then do all the things that are required. Ritu, Kaveri, Arnav. Ritu got it, that is correct. Kaveri also did the same thing as Rishit. Kaveri, see what is happening to the reaction. So you have H2I2 are the reactants, but for the modified thing, HI is the reactant. So how will you count that particular modification? Root name. Don't just do a trial and error, like 25, 50% of it is correct. Okay, I'll discuss it. So Rishit and Kaveri, listen up. Okay. No, Rishit, you don't multiply both. Look at, so one part of it, you guys have figured out correctly that agar ye k hai, agar ye k dash hai, to this, we multiplied this equation by two to get like two HI, H2I2 instead of half. So K dash will be equal to K ko square karna padega. So phi becomes 25, that is correct. There's another change also happening here. So HI yaha pe product tha, that has become the reactant here. So when reaction is reversed, when the equation is reversed, what happens to K dash in that case? K is equal to 1 by K dash. Correct. So, what is final? Kya hona one, by... 1 by 
25 there you go 1 by k square this is the final thing so i'll be 1 by 5 square that is 1 by 25 Yeah. Rishit, got it? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Good. All right. You guys, do you have you updated your Flipper accounts? I haven't used it in a while. Hmm. But okay, like still um, pending to do. Hang on. So, like all these examples, you have. you know this was another one what happens if you add these three equations what will happen to the k value you will multiply the variables k that that's it that is the answer uh okay so temperature related koi questions nahi hai isme okay we could do some more questions for practice uh will you guys take like 5 10 minutes set up your uh flipper so i'll start a live session here oh yeah i got logged out have to update it yeah like there's been a few changes and things actually wait this is is there any update but which we need to do or whatever yeah. version we have is enough uh update it better because there's been things added to it like now we have live sessions and everything so okay not yet uh, some things need to be made available here yeah just like keep that in the background just press on update and see that you are all logged in and everything till then we'll continue with this thing Was there any class code or something like that? Hmm, class code, yes. But otherwise, you should be able to just choose your class. Is that? Ah, uh, for me, it says I have no linked account, so mine got probably deleted or something like that. So, could you just give the class code? Yeah, sure. Is it asking for class code, or are you able to choose the class from a drop down? It's asking for, for me. It's asking. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Yeah, I think we have to make a new account, right? Yeah, yeah. Load sir had sent that update, no? Like, which me? Reloading the data. So. Yeah, hey, I'll I'll send the class code to you guys once I get it. What disconnected? What are we do? What what are we doing? Just uh, Man, set up. Is it the same class code you had sent to me? Because you had sent me one on like WhatsApp like some time ago. I'll have to check because again some changes have been made. No, S D A accounts also have gotten reset and everything. So, I'm 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 just getting the class codes. Once I have it, I'll forward it to you guys. Or sir, may post it on the group directly. That we'll figure. Uh, All right. Now we just exit again. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah. Just update your app if update is available and required from Play Store, App Store, wherever. Just keep it ready. Once I have the class code, you guys can set up your accounts in that. Okay. So we'll continue with our chapter only in the meantime. Yeah, but those are the kind of questions that you get. Very simple, straightforward. It is exactly what we discussed here. You'll be given certain values, known values, uh, unknown values. You have to find out. So use the correct formula for the correct situation. You'll get the answer easily. Okay. Um. All right. For gaseous systems. Okay, let's take the same sample example, A plus B. 
in equilibrium with C plus D. This time, all of them are gases. So when things are gases, I discussed earlier also Abhi just now that uh, concentration is expressed in terms of partial pressures. You guys remember what is partial pressure and how it relates to total pressure? Yes, ma'am. I think it was pressure like plus one partial P1 pressure. P1 one at a time. Ritu? P1, like P of pressure of the gas upon like total pressure. No, I think it was like P total equals to P1, P2, and so on. Yeah, like it was sum added. of partial pressure is equal to total pressure. Right. Yes, sum Look, of all the parts. P1 plus P A. Yeah, this is correct. But if I want to find specifically, okay, what is partial pressure of P1? How does it relate to total pressure? Like, how can I find out the specific pressure of P1, specific pressure of P2? Ah, Ritu remembered it. Correct. Mole fraction. You use the mole fraction. So, partial pressure of any one component is equal to the mole fraction of that component into the total pressure. Okay. So simple example, if I have a mixture of A and B, like both are gases. So total pressure will be equal to, like P total will be equal to partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. Suppose dono milake, I have five moles of it. So out of which A is two moles, and B is like three moles. Then partial pressure of A specifically will be equal to mole fraction of A. So A ka kitna fraction hai? That'll be two by five times the total pressure. And partial pressure of B will be uska mole fraction. So three by five times the total pressure. Hmm? I have a doubt. So like in partial pressure, we count when we say like as a mix of gases in the air and then we want to find out the pressure of just that Correct. one gas that we want. So yes. when, we, when we carry out reactions, we have just CO2 readily available to us. Then what is the point of calling it partial pressure? It's not mixed with air. We have the CO2. like, so then, like, like so then if you have only CO2 and nothing else like in a test tube or a cylinder or something, then mole fraction, it's not part right so this will be equal to one so total pressure is equal to partial pressure okay. out of five moles like five out of five moles is co2 only so that will essentially be one if it's a mixture of gases then this is going to be a fraction and that plays a picture that plays a role that's it okay yeah. um all right, so just like keep this in mind. Partial pressure of any gas is equal to mole fraction of that gas times the total pressure. Um, is this like new info to you guys or do you remember now? Like I know Ritu remembers, she mentioned that, but the rest of you. What? Like, yes, ma'am. Remember this concept of partial pressure? all that or is it sounding like new info it sounds uh, like to be honest i forgot so this was no, we've done we've, yeah we've done this like i know about the mole fraction one was i think in the first chapter itself but partial pressure one i forgot mm. mole fraction is like just like how you have molarity molality it is a way to represent quantity what to have first chapter may but this is how you use these concepts, is how all of them are interrelated. In the beginning, you guys were very, very regular with your homework and everything. That's why you remember it till now. Where beach may you just like let it go and now you don't remember anything about partial pressures. All right. But at least right now, did this whole thing make sense? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And just one thing that A plus B is the total pressure, right? A plus B, I mean, that's the mixture of gases. Like, let's say cylinder box, jo bhi hai, 
इसमें आई हैव टू गैसेस ए एंड बी सो ओवरऑल दोनों मिला के आई हैव फाइव मोल्स ऑफ इट लाइक हाउ डिड आई गेट फाइव मोल्स आई हैव टू मोल्स ऑफ ए एंड थ्री मोल्स ऑफ बी एंड टोटल प्रेशर दोनों मिला के पी टोटल प्रेशर अप्लाई कर रहे हैं बॉक्स पे राइट सो द टोटल प्रेशर इज ड्यू टू गैस ए एंड इट इज ड्यू टू गैस बी ऑल्सो सो हाउ डू वी फिगर आउट हाउ मच ऑफ इट इज ड्यू टू गैस ए एंड हाउ मच ऑफ इट इज ड्यू टू गैस बी दट्स पार्शल प्रेशर ऑफ ए प्लस पार्शल प्रेशर ऑफ बी सो इट्स मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ ए टाइम्स टोटल प्रेशर इज दी पार्शल प्रेशर ऑफ ए एंड मोल फ्रैक्शन टाइम्स टोटल प्रेशर इज पार्शल प्रेशर ऑफ बी ओके ओके ऑलराइट सो कमिंग बैक टू दिस टॉकिंग अबाउट इक्विलिब्रियम कांस्टेंट लेट्स से वी हैव दिस रिएक्शन ऑल ऑफ देम आर गैसेस अम सो kp i mentioned is same as kc except p equal to pressure p for pressure so when i when they are gases i can take their concentration in terms of pressure so instead of concentration of c i will consider partial pressure of c raised to the power c stoichiometric everything remains the same just that instead of concentration i am taking partial pressures so this is how this is modified of a times raised to the power a partial pressure of b raised to the power b okay agreed like does this up to here does this make sense yes ma yes ma okay next i'll just substitute what does partial pressure mean i'm just going to substitute this formula so partial pressure of c is basically mole fraction of c raised to the power c so into total pressure eh? so because reaction vessel is same for all the total pressure is going to remain the same thing for all um into mole fraction of d raised to the power d upon mole fraction of a raised to the power a mole fraction of b raised to the power b so you know like if the math works out all you need to know is the mole fraction of each of these along with the total pressure and you can easily do this okay yeah. so this that that's all there is about kp uh then if you want to look at the relation between kc and kp so iske liye use pv equal to nrt so you use this equation because this gives you the relation between pressure and the number of moles right guys are you like should i go ahead with this you guys following Yes, yes, um, yeah. Do you explain? Do you explain the part about PT is equal to PA plus PP? Like that. So this is the concept of partial pressure, no? What exactly? What specifically do you have a doubt in, or do you want to understand in this? what is pa and pb this is not related to the reaction at all so if that is the confusion like forget about yeah, it yeah i thought that was yeah i thought the a and b was this was just a example i took 
for explaining okay what is partial pressure and all that so ah okay Uh, what was X C T? Uh, the mole T. fraction. Mole fraction of C. Ah, okay. Just a second, guys. All right. Um. Oh, ma'am, in the relation between K C and K P, we just have to substitute P V equals to N R T. Ha, huh, like a modified version of it. So P V equal to N R T. I can write it as pressure of that particular glass gas equal to N by V into R T. So this is essentially concentration. Concentration into R T. So expression for K P, you take it in terms of pressure. Expression for K C, you take it in terms of concentration. so pressure in place of pressure i can write concentration of c into rt raised to the power c concentration of d into rt raised to the power d so that's how you substitute it in place of pressure uh, then if you take concentrations all to one side that becomes kc and then rest of the relation is in terms of rt if you want yeah, we will do the derivation of d uh in the meantime i got the class code you guys so if you want to like log in and set up flipper accounts you can do that right now so i can see the module uh, ha so the class code is c211 you would search also there in the class yeah yeah Ma'am, the code that you gave—that was the class code, right? Not the live code, right? No, no, no. class code. C two. Ma'am, could you go back? Huh? Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were writing the code. No, for that reason, yeah. So set it up. Log in. I'll let you know when I start the live session. Oh, I can see Adit and Arnav are here. Ma'am, it says no data. Yeah, that's mine as well. Logging out. So just like be, just create your account and just be there. That's why I'm not like starting live session or anything right now. Just like create your account. Yeah, mine also says no data. When it's updated, we'll uh, we'll do it. For that matter, even I'm not able to see. Um, what exactly I'm supposed to do? Showing me your account is logged on another device or log out. So mine had that as well. Like I had Sanat's account. I just deleted it and reinstalled it. Yeah. I have no. Okay, like it's showing my name, but it's showing um attention. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. You just have to delete your profile. Then just create a new one again. Like how we did it before. Huh? 
how to delete the process. Okay. Let me know once you guys are all like done and set up and everything, then we'll continue with the session. So once the data is like activated from the back end, then I can start the live session. And can you check if I'm in or it's showing I'm not there? Why? What is it showing for you? Uh, yeah, I can't see your profile here. Only see Adit and Arnav and Lohit. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I'm not able to select the class. Like I entered everything, but I'm not able to select the class. Do you have like a box to enter the class code? Um, Like, can you switch on your video and like show your phone screen what is happening? Yeah, I got it. It's 11 term 2. Um, for me. Yeah. It's okay. You can pause it. We can record it in some other way. Maybe you can give me the option. Concentration of C to the power C into concentration of D to the power D upon concentration of A to the power A into concentration of B to the power B, correct. And expression for KP. P of C raised to C plus P of D raised to D upon P of A raised to A plus P of D raised to D. Plus nine into. Partial pressure of D raised to the power B. Uh, one thing to note, so when I say concentration of anything, like concentration of X, where X can be A, B, C, D, whatever it may be, concentration is like if you're taking molarity, which is what is mainly used, it is number of moles of that substance in the given volume of the solvent, like wherever it is, right? So concentration is number of moles of that particular thing, A, B, C, D, upon the volume. Yeah, so this is the main crux of what we'll be using. Okay, now PV is equal to NRT. So this I can write it as pressure equal to N by V into RT. Simple, I just took the volume to RHS becomes N by V. Now, let me take this and substitute it in the value for KP. So KP will be equal to, so partial pressure of C. So if I substitute it for number of moles and volume, it will be number of moles of C upon volume into RT, this whole thing raised to the power C, into number of moles of D, upon V into RT, this whole thing raised to the power D, upon number of moles of A upon V into RT raised to the power A, and number of moles of B upon V RT raised to the power B. Okay, so can you guys simplify this? to give me the expression for Kc exclusively, like Kc into something, something. Can you simplify it or should we? Rt. Kc into Rt. Will it be just Rt? P plus B minus A minus B. 
there you go you have the exponents which is applied to rt also so if i take the concentration of c concentration of d concentration of a concentration of b alone then that's going to give me kc but i also have rt raised to the power c plus d minus cuz it's in the denominator a plus b so this is the relation between kp and kc let me write it in like proper terms we'll end up with uh kp is equal to kc into rt raised to the power delta n where delta n is the difference in the number of moles so number of gaseous moles because solid and liquids will not really uh exert any pressure so you won't apply pv and rt to them so difference in the number of gaseous moles in reactants and product okay right so up to here you guys have you noted it down is it clear making sense yes ma'am yes okay everyone's done Yes, yes ma'am. Ah, uh, delta n gaseous moles, Anna. Let's write it as delta n g. K P equal to K C into R T power n g. Oh, calculating the equilibrium concentration. I think that's like one type of. problem let me see if i find a question we'll do that um otherwise iske baad us aane ki oh le shaat here spins we completely forgot about that and could you both go back a second yeah but uh, this derivation won't be asked no mm not really but it's simple enough kc hai kp hai this is the main crux of this thing once you have this it's just substitution the value of n so we just get it by c plus d minus a plus b right so that's a delta n difference in the number of moles like for example if we have like same thing let's take hi gives h2 plus i2 decomposition of hi the total number of moles on the product side c plus d is 1 plus 1 equal to 2 total number of moles on reactant side is also 2 So in that case, this becomes two minus two one. So that's kind of how you calculate it. If I take ammonia production, N two plus three H two gives two N H three. In that case, delta N will be uh, product side. There's two moles. Reactant side. There's one plus three four moles. So it's going to be two minus four minus two. Second. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that delta n means. That's the difference in the number of gaseous moles. 
so for the hi1 mm. the value of rt would become 1 yeah or only the value of t uh only the no the whole value of rt that's a good catch rishit needs to be in bracket yeah thus rt both of them are raised to the power one. Okay, so this is the thing. Um, I'll show you guys a question. Like, try solving that question. If you guys are able to do it, okay, otherwise we'll discuss. So this is again another uh, type of question on like calculating what is the equilibrium constant. Example 11. So the value of Kp for this equation, this reaction is three at this temperature. Uh, initially partial pressure of CO2 is 0.48 bar. Partial pressure of CO is zero bar. Uh, pure graphite solid hai, so iska you won't consider the pressure. There won't be any pressure due to this. Calculate the equilibrium partial pressures of CO and CO2. Uh, you guys can do it or should I do it? Like, do you guys want to attempt it or should I do it? Um, can we try it? Yeah, go ahead. Can we attempt? I'm so if we ever had to consider C, we would only take it as zero. Yeah, no pressure exerted by C. It's a solid, no? So pure solids, pure liquids, ke liye partial pressure ka koi question nahi hai. It'll be zero. Only gases exert pressure. Guys, uh, just take like two, three minutes, give it a shot. I'll just come back in a bit.
All right. Where you guys at? I don't know what to find anymore. Okay. What? I've done till a step, but then uske baad I want to ask what to do. Ritu, KC one, KC three. No. You're given uh, the value of KP. It says calculate the equilibrium partial pressures. Iska matlab hai you need to calculate the partial pressure at equilibrium. So that's what you're supposed to find out. Okay, let let's take this step by step. Where did my pen? Stylus. This. Okay. Uh, have you guys noted down the reactions and the number numerical values and all that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, what is the equation? CO2 gaseous state plus C solid state. Mm -hmm. this, uh, and this give, which gives product to CO. Right? Yes, just Ma'am, just yeah. asking small thing. Is this, this would be heterogeneous, right? Yeah, this is heterogeneous. Okay, solid B here. Uh, what are the given values? I know you're given KP. How much is it? P3. Three. three. Okay, three point. Right. Uh, what else are you given? Your the pressure, partial pressure for CO2 is given, like the concentration CO2 is given as 0 0.48. Atmospheres? Yeah. Yeah. And no, but no. Be careful, guys. Okay. What else? For CO, it is zero. Uh, this partial pressures, do you know? Like, so I'm assuming it would be in the beginning at, at the start, right? Yeah, it says initial partial Ah, initially pco2 is this much and pure graphite is present okay then find so calculate the equilibrium partial pressures so we need to find pco2 and pco at equilibrium so we have what they were at the beginning of time like just when the reaction started uh reaction ho raha tha equilibrium sets in. So at equilibrium, what are the partial pressures? That's what we need to find out. Okay. So whenever you come across questions like this, usually whether it's pressure or uh, concentration, you'll be given the equilibrium constant, either KC or KP. And you'll be given something like this. Either you'll be given equilibrium values or you'll be given the initial values. Whatever is given or not given, this is the process you'll follow. Okay. Uh, pe, just because you have KP and pressures, uh, no need to worry at all. KP is given. We just learned that KP is nothing but same expression, except you consider the partial pressures here, which is what we are given here. So that way, no issues at all. Okay. Now, coming to solving the actual question. This is our equation. Then at t equal to zero, what were the values? CO2 is given as 0 0.48 bar. Carbon ka is literally like, we will not consider that in the expression for pressure. And CO ka is zero because nothing was created at that time. Okay. Let's say after some time, equilibrium happened to usme se let's say x amount of co2 has reacted Matlab, x bar of co2 it's reduced by x bar so if x amount of co2 is reacted 
how much of CO will be produced? N minus X. Why is it one minus X? No, like N, N being like the total moles. Well, are we supposed to find a mean, ma'am? We were saying. No, like if, see, if one mole of CO2 is reacted, out of the reaction, I'm getting two moles of CO. So, we say, oh. yeah, if X amount has reacted, how much of CO will be produced? 2X. 2X. Right? So, let's say equilibrium is established. So, in the vessel, how much of CO2 will be left? 0 0.48 minus the X. Minus X. We're doing minus X because it has reduced by that much amount. So the pressure also will be reduced by that much amount. And how much of, uh, like what will be the partial pressure due to CO at equilibrium? 2X. 2x, 2x has been produced, Matla, whatever partial pressure is there due to CO, that will be 2x only. So then you now, just use this, right? There you go. Uh, okay, okay. KP is, yeah. I didn't get how x is related, like, to like 0 0.48, like is x the pressure that has reduced? Yes. So some amount of CO2 has reacted, no? So we're saying, the pressure that reduced because of the reaction is X. Also, ma'am, if it, it wasn't zero and it would be like, for example, one, would it be like two X plus one? Yeah. So if I'm already okay. in the reaction vessel already has some amount of CO, then the total pressure that will be due to this thing is whatever is existing plus what is produced during the reaction. So it'll be one plus two X. Ma'am, how do you know then that would be like 2x? This ratio. Like CO, I'm getting purely because of the reaction, no? There is no other source for CO there. So, based on the stoichiometric ratios, uh, by how much ever this will have reduced, the same proportional amount is the increase of that. So if one mole of this is reduced, proportionally two moles will be formed. Now, because we have the relation, like partial pressure is mole fraction times the total pressure, right? So based on that, you can get a direct relation for this. You can equate like number of moles with- I still didn't get how uh, moles are related to pressure. So partial pressure of CO2 is the mole fraction of CO2 times the total pressure, right? Total pressure at any given time is going to be constant. It's like atmospheric pressure or whatever is pressure is there inside the vessel. So this is a constant factor. Mole fraction. So partial pressure is directly related to the number of moles of that particular substance that is present. So I can get a direct relation based on that. Like if, if this has increased by one mole and that caused like a certain amount of pressure decrease, that means that two moles of CO has been produced. So the pressure due to CO will increase by that equal amount because it's, whatever X is reacting, that only is getting converted into carbon dioxide, so the carbon monoxide. So, so like- Understood, ma'am. Yeah. So KPK expression may, the partial pressures we consider are equilibrium page OB pressures. Are. So this will be 2X the whole square upon 0 0.48 minus X, that is equal to, this is given as three. So you'll get a quadratic equation here. Solve that equation, you'll get the value of X. So once you have X, you can calculate what are the equilibrium pressures. So 0 0.48 minus X will be is answer and 2X will be is answer.
so this sort of question anytime you get this is the process you follow initially what were the concentrations or pressures depending on the equation then assume that x amount has reacted so stoichiometry say you will get whether x of this is produced to x of this is produced whatever it may be then figure out based on that at equilibrium if i observe the vessel how much is left so reactant will be reduced by that much amount product will be increased by that much amount so once i have this equate it with kp or kc whatever is given all right it's already 6 past 6 so once you guys solve this question then we'll end the class with this ma'am i got a few values oh, ma'am yeah Class starting in a couple of minutes. Could I? Could I teach you? Okay. How much have you like? Are you close to solving this? Like answer? Are you getting? Like I understood what you just explained. Okay. Complete the problem. Then tomorrow we can discuss if you have any questions. Okay. Adit, what are the uh, values that you're getting? One second. Ah, uh, please. You. Could you also tell me again, like how did you get P square CO by P CO two? How did you get that? What is how do you write KP KC values? Formula kya hai KP ka? Oh, okay, okay, you just did that. All right. That's it. That is the equilibrium constant. So that's it. I took you. Uh, you took like a mole fraction or something. I was thinking that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ritu, the the number that you sent is that. Uh, That's the value of x. X, okay. Um, value of x. Let me compare it with this. I'm getting x as zero point three six. Close enough. Like in the book, it's given as x is zero point three three. Two is getting a different value. Why? How did like did you use a quadratic formula or did you do splitting of middle term? Like what did you do? I Why got it. Split the middle term. Acha. Oh wait, no, I found a mistake. Okay. Ha. Huh. Other. Yeah, I got an equation first, but I wasn't able to get a proper value for x. So then, what I decided to do, um. At the four x square upon zero point four eight, I just divided it and I got like a eight point three three. Then I took three upon eight point three three, and I'm getting zero point three six bar, like the x value. Oh no! Wait, yeah, wait, wait. I think, ma'am, you can't divide like when like zero point four eight minus x, right? You can only divide if it's like multiplication or division, right? Yeah. Okay then now I have to solve what I think. Twenty four. Uh, three fours are twelve. Thirteen, fourteen will be one point four four equal to zero. That's why I'm continuing. I'm doing it over here, no? Is it? So this is the quadratic equation you get. Do you guys remember quadratic formula? Is it there this year, or have we left that in tenth standard? Ma'am, does this not have zeros? It can be used. Like this equation. It should have zeros. I did like the d a d is equal to root of like b squared minus four ac, and I'm getting like a negative answer. टूमोरोमीट tomorrow finish the chapter